Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am over the moon excited about today's interview. We have an amazing expert guest and lifetime born and raised Kansas City Chiefs fan. Um, that has nothing to do with his expertise, by the way, but that definitely adds to his credibility and uh, style and preference, of course, because you guys know how big of a Chiefs fan I am. And so, of course, it's nice to have someone in the fold with me here, but that has nothing to do with his expertise. He is actually a trademark attorney and the author, the founder of the Royal Trademark Law Services that he has um, started and founded to be able to assist businesses just like yours and just like mine um, with U.S. trademark registration process. And of course, you guys have been asking and asking all over the place to be able to, you know, talk with a, a trademark attorney. And so this is our chance to be able to talk to Ben and he is fantastic. Um, his name is Ben Becker, and he has been doing this for several years, has a wonderful family and children, and I'm going to let him talk a little bit about that in a, in a minute. But what I want to tell you guys first and off the bat is before we get into talking with Ben, why do you need a trademark for Amazon? Why do you need brand registry for Amazon? Why is this important at all? Well, let me tell you this, especially our wholesale bundlers, you guys are basically private labeling products. You're taking products that are already made and you are putting them into kits or bundles or gifts. And that requires no, that gives you no protection whatsoever. Even though you've created a listing, anybody who wants to find those same exact products can jump on your listing and piggyback off of, off of all of your hard work and all of your knowledge and all of your keyword research and the hours that you put in to create this wonderful listing, um, they can still hop right on and hijack your listing. Now, if you have brand registry and you have a legitimate U.S. trademark to get that brand registry, then your hijacking friends can be kicked off in about two seconds. So one email, one request, and they are gone. And so one of the things that the reason why we want a U.S. trademark is because it is required to register your brand with Amazon. But why should you register your brand with Amazon? First of all, some of you guys are like, I don't have a brand. I just want to do bundles so that people don't hijack my listings. Well, I get it, but there's a process to this. And there's a reason why, because it gives you protection, not necessarily protection from people stealing your brand, unless you want a household name, which we'll talk to Ben about. Um, but the reality here is that it protects you on Amazon and gives you more privileges, not just brand registry, like, hey, I've got my own brand, but it gives you ability to add video. It gives you ability to add testimonials, more pictures, more description, and of course, branding. So you can put your own logos, your own branding. You can customize your storefront on Amazon with your own products. Even if you sell baby goods and car parts, you are still able to put your branding on things and then represent your brand on Amazon where no one else can take that little corner piece of the pie that Amazon's giving you. And all it takes is, I know I make it sound so easy, right? <laughs> Ben's probably laughing at me, but the reality is all it takes is a U.S. trademark and then brand registry. And you need to have one in order to get the other, which is why we are welcoming wonderful Ben Becker to the show. Ben, can you join me? Hey, Good morning. Oh, gotta Afternoon, love that Chiefs logo, right? I'm so excited that yeah. you just, you know, you're such a huge fan as well. I love that. So um, a little bit about yourself. Why don't you tell everybody uh, a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Kansas City born and raised, diehard Chiefs and Royals fan. So that uh, that game recently was a little bit of a, a heart, heart attack. Uh, you know, hope that Mahomes is doing well and everything. But um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I am a trademark attorney. I, I work with clients, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs who are wanting to grow and protect their brands, both on Amazon and, and just kind of out there in general commerce. Um, I uh, really enjoy kind of working with people and seeing what they do, because I mean, especially since the invention of the side hustle, everybody's doing something different and unique. And so it's, it's really fun for me to meet these people and see what they do and then, uh, you know, lend my expertise to to help them grow and, and build their own brands and, and kind of achieve those those new markets or, or new, new milestones that they have. Um, and as you mentioned, a, a big part of getting your own business going is is the U.S. trademark registration and protections that it offers. And so I'm, I'm really happy to help 
uh, and really enjoy kind of educating people about what those protections are and how they go through go about the, the application process. So I'm really excited to to lend whatever knowledge I can to to you and all of your your listeners and answer any questions that they have. Awesome. Well, I have brought a few of the questions that a lot of people have asked me over, you know, the last couple of years. I know I did a little bit of a mini training on kind of a how to do it yourself, but even there's so many people um, questioning even that process, people getting nervous. So what are your recommendations when it comes to kind of doing it yourself or, you know, working with an attorney? Um, I would equate it to doing taxes. Uh, Everybody can do it themselves unless you live outside the United States. And um, in that case, the USPTO actually requires you to work with an attorney. But for all of you, those of you living in the United States, uh, you can do it yourself. You just have to get a USPTO account and then go through the, the process of, of filling out the application. Uh, that being said, much like taxes, there are a lot of nuances to both um, identifying potential conflicts for your brand and then um, in the application, making sure that you're provide, providing all of the correct information and in the correct format and way. Um, so if you have any questions, I would, I would definitely recommend working with an attorney. Um, if for no other reason, then the USPTO process is not short. Uh, if you file an application and you have no problems and it goes through the, the, the process as quickly as it can, you're still looking at about eight to 12 months. And for a business, that's a lifetime. So if something happens and you have to restart the process, that's just setting yourself back uh, enormously if you're if you're waiting for that registry from the US in order to take that to you know Amazon for example so um, i would recommend to, to work with a professional who knows what they're doing to help prevent you know having to restart the process but uh, as you said there are many people who have succeeded in doing it themselves and there's nothing preventing those of you in the United States from doing that Well, and I can lend my own issues with that as well. I actually have one trademark that we did do ourselves and we filled everything out and it was something that was kind of an acronym. So there was nothing that really anyone was going to be contesting. And there was, it's just kind of a low risk, um, you know, bizarre kind of a thing that we were trying to get trademarked. And we had actually no hiccups whatsoever doing all that. However, um, as you know, because yes, I am working with Ben on my second trademark after we did try to do it ourselves and made too many mistakes and just had some some issues that we were were way above our heads so we are very happy to be working with professionals like I said you might be able to watch a YouTube video and do some plumbing on your own but it's way better to just hire a professional because just in case right yep yep definitely So I know that a lot of people are, you know, as I was, you know, with the introduction and everything, a lot of uh, our clients and people looking to file trademarks are doing it specifically for just getting that brand approval on Amazon. So most of them are doing a generalized, you know, word mark that they're applying for. So um, can you go over just some of the basic requirements of applying for a word mark? Sure. Uh, So first off, you have to have your mark and uh, choosing a mark, obviously, uh, you'd want it to be as distinct and unique as possible in order to both develop your brand and and brand recognition, but also to help it uh, move through the the US registration process as as easily as possible. Um, For the application itself, it's it's fairly straightforward, but it depends on the the type of application that you file. And um, for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, there are um, two, two different forms you can fill out, an intent to use form or a use in commerce. And that's just saying the difference between, hey, I plan on selling this or selling products with this mark in the future, or I am doing it actively at the time of um, application submittal. If you're doing an intent to use application, you just need your name, contact information. Uh, You cannot use a PO box or any kind of uh, forwarding uh, service. You also have to provide phone number and email and all of that information becomes public. So if you don't want to use your home address, just keep that in mind and, and take um, whatever necessary steps you, you need to to get a different address for that. Uh, then you need the mark itself. If you're doing a, a word mark, I would recommend you uh, just do a standard um, characters. Uh, if you do standard characters, then the US protects all stylized variations of that. So you know, Coca-Cola has their Coca-Cola mark, but then they have stylized lettering that you would recognize on the can. 
but uh, just doing standard mark protects anything you could think of. Uh, that's after that, if you're great to know. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that's great to know just because, um, you know, I know there's been some confusion about like, well, if you submit it with a specific font and style, are you protected on that or can people use it? So that's good because then it kind of covers all bases. Yeah, yeah, I would highly recommend, even if you are planning on using some kind of stylization to your mark, uh, submit it as standard characters and that way, yeah, if you want to rebrand in the future or, you know, redo your, your presentation in the future, you're not held up by any you know, additional requirements for filing. Um, after that, for the intent to use, you just have to uh, pay the, the filing fee. It would be, you know, right now, they, they just up their prices. It was, um, it's now $250 per class of good or service that you file under. So an easy way to think about that is uh, toys are one class of good, clothes are a second class of good. So if you're filing in both of those, then you would uh, have a total application fee of $500. You submit that and then it starts it through the process. Um, now for an intent to use application, you will eventually have to show that you are actually using the mark before the USPTO will register that mark and, and issue the certificate that you need for brand registry. Um, to do that, you have to file what's called a statement of use or allegation of use. And uh, that's where you show them, hey, I've got a website, I'm selling this product. Hey, I'm up on Amazon, here's my link to my page. Here's my brand name and the products in, that I'm selling. Now, your products have to be whatever you claim on your trademark application in order to gain the appropriate protection. So if you are selling, or if you claim toys and clothes, but then you send the USPTO a picture of your brand on food, you're not gonna be able to prove to them that you're using your mark in commerce with the appropriate classes. So just keep that in mind. Um, or uh, a, oh, go ahead. So I was just going to say that's an excellent thing. And, and is it helpful um, one way or the other as far as like getting the actual approval, uh, you know, albeit everything else lines up, but is it easier to get mm -hmm. approval for something you're already using rather than what you intend to use? It speeds up the process. Uh, it, um, because for a use in commerce application, you submit that proof. Uh, the date that you submit your the rest of your application. So all of the, uh, the other, other, other items that I mentioned, the contact information, mark, et cetera. So what it does is it, it gives you more time. Um, it doesn't necessarily make it easier or faster, or, um, more likely to register or anything like that. Uh, if you do a use in commerce versus an intent to use, um, intent to use really just kind of gets your foot in the door, kind of bookmarks, saves your spot um, so that, you know, if you're not, 100% ready to go. You would need a couple uh, months or something to get ready, but you want to make sure you have that protection and, and are getting that process started, given that it is such a long process. Uh, it's good to, to do that intent to use at the beginning. The other caveat to that would be that second filing, that allegation of use costs an additional $100 per class of good. So if you're filing in you know, four classes, that's an additional $400 that you need to, to give to the USPTO sometime down the road. So just another piece to consider. Now, I know that there's been tons of questions and confusion about the classes by which you register under the US trademark versus what Amazon's requirements are. And I know that Amazon's requirements are to have a registered trademark in at least one class, but they're not particular about which class or which product. So for example, you're using toys and clothing. If I register in the clothing category with the, the US trademark and then I use that on Amazon, I actually can use my trademark um, to list in any category I choose as long as I have that registration and the Amazon verifies that my exact brand is the exact brand I'm using on Amazon. They are very indifferent of which categories you file in. So that being said, um, what do you, what do you, what is your recommendation for the class in which you're filing for um, for the U.S. piece? If you're only going to choose one class, what is your what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I would say that if Amazon is going to let you do it, then that is that's great, and that's um, something that you should take advantage of. With this in mind, the protections that you get are limited to whatever you put, at least at the with the federal government. The protections that you get are limited to exactly what's in your application. So if you put in clothes on your application, but then 
you start selling food or, or something else that's not in that same class, you cannot, uh, with the federal government at least, then go after somebody who starts using your mark to sell whatever that other item might be. Um, the other item or the other piece I would add to that to keep in mind is that uh, your protections and your rights to that trademark are limited to the items that you're selling. So if you go in and start selling clothes and then uh, a, a copycat starts selling, well, pardon me, you go in and start selling clothes and, and toys and then a copycat takes your brand name and they start selling toys also, um, you can't stop them at with the federal courts, but you can be... Um, they can come after you if they get it, if they go to the, to the USPTO and they get registered in toys, they can come after you at the federal level and say, hey, wait a minute, he's infringing or he or she is infringing on my mark in this category. So you're you're outside of your limits of protection there. So the USPTO won't won't um, save you since you have a registration in clothing if somebody else comes after you when you're reg when they're registered in the additional classes, if that makes sense. It was a little convoluted. So if I yeah, kind of. Bit. I'm like, I know you can probably see the look in face. Like, wait a second. So if you have your mark in clothing and you're protected in that, but then you also sell toys under that same mark, and someone else then does, then they could come after you, even though you're registered in one category, but not another. So, um, right. you know, this, I know for a lot of Amazon sellers, you know, this is something we're just clearing the air about because we want to make sure that everybody understands um, the risks and the rewards of okay. doing one or the other. But the reality is, I mean, even using mommy income as a trademark, you know, if I have a trademark in my service-based businesses, and then I go and make you know t-shirts or something and that's not a registered class then technically speaking I don't have protection under that because I registered as a service and now I'm selling products with my brand name so I don't know how that all works I'm sure that's a whole different conversation but that's kind of the gist of it a little bit yeah yeah and and uh, as you said we we can get into a related classes and how that plays into things but that is a little bit more in the weeds Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd you know, be happy to discuss it further with anybody who has specific questions. About, about like services kind of thing. Okay. Um, so are there certain things that do actually increase your chances of being approved or is it really just following the letter of the law? Um, there's nothing necessarily on your application other than providing all of the uh, appropriate information in the correct manners. Um, but conflict research is really your best, your best tool for ensuring that you are, are going to get registered with the USPTO. And I say that because if you spend, you know, or if you have a qualified professional who's, who's familiar with the area, if they spend two hours looking through your brand and all the potential conflicts that could be either on the USPTO database or out in social media or um, out just in in Google that aren't, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things that aren't necessarily going through the trademark process. So if you do that conflict research, you are at least made aware of all of those potential issues before you get going. And that way uh, you can identify, hey, you know, this mark has a lot of potential issues that might either kill it totally and have me make me go all the way back to the beginning, or it'll just make it more difficult and then draw out the process. Whereas uh, this other mark that, you know, I, it's maybe not my favorite mark, but it's way more likely to get registered because it's more unique and distinct and, and less uh, likely to be confusing or, or similar to someone else's. Uh, that one is going to get pushed through faster. and You identify that process up front. So you save yourself um, a minimum of three months uh, there. And I say three months is because from the date your application is submitted until the USPTO looks at it is three months. There's <laughs> nothing that happens in between. So if you identify through conflict research those issues early, then um, that saves you, one, the filing fee, and then two, whatever time you, you sink into the application process. 
Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. I know some people try to think of like, is there anything that can improve your chances? And really, it's the uniqueness of your brand and making sure that, yeah. you know, you're not making up something similar. And most people just they, they think they came up with a great unique idea. And upon research uh, shows them quickly that, you know, 10 other people have thought of the very thing that they're thinking of. And so yeah. that is really helpful to be able to I mean, and honestly, I've done many quick searches on the USPTO website site where you can literally type in a name and think it's unique and then realize 12 other people have the same exact idea. So that's something you can initially do everyone going to the USPTO and doing a quick search. Um, if you've got something in mind, uh, if nothing comes up, you're, you know, that's, that's just another level of research. Um, it doesn't mean you're out of the woods and you've got a great idea. It means that there's just nothing imminent and you have to dig way deeper to make sure. Um, okay. So Another thing is like, what have you found to be um, keeping all of this in mind? I know we've talked about big brands like, you know, Coca-Cola is a household name and has been for nearly a century and, you know, these other things. But, you know, a lot of the Amazon customers are like, I don't, I'm not interested in being a household name. I really don't think anybody's going to try to sue me or I'm going to have to go after anybody for copying my brand. I just want, you know, this kind of protection and kind of, kind of sneak through the door. But can you talk a little bit about the true benefits of having a registered trademark, even if for only Amazon sellers? Sure. Um, so the biggest uh, benefit I can tell you is, is peace of mind. Um, and, I, and I say that for a couple of reasons. The first one being, if you have your own registered trademark and you're operating in your, your registered areas, your protected areas, classes, nobody can come after you and say, you know, 10 years down the road, hey, you know, you're infringing on our mark. Um, we're going to take you to, to, to court unless you give us all of your profits for the last 10 years. You stop using this in all, you know, every marketplace and you immediately rebrand. Re um, that, that just gives you the idea of, hey, you know what, I'm set, I'm good to go. There's nothing else I have to worry about in terms of somebody coming after me, unless you're doing something um, kind of untold or, or questionable, and in which case you should know those risks getting into it. Um, Secondly, it gives you the peace of mind that there's somebody out there kind of watching your back. And I, and I say that for the USPTO and, and they're not necessarily actively protecting your brand per se, but through the registration process, they're identifying people or applications that are too similar to yours and they're not letting them register. So that process alone, given that Amazon is requiring brand registry, filters out a lot of potential competition for Amazon um, sellers without them having to do anything actively. As long as you get your mark and you're, you're keeping your mark um, updated at the USPTO's office, they're doing some work for you on the back end. Um, the, the other side of that that I would say is peace of mind in that you may not think you wanna be a household brand currently, but if you start doing really well and for whatever reason you decide that, you know what, uh, I've, I've made it, I'm comfortable and I wanna sell off my brand, the trademark is a good asset to have. It shows that your, your mark is, is recognized. It shows that you have a, kind of a, a piece of the market. It's good to, to show potential investors. And uh, it, it also lets your customers know that, hey, this is somebody I trust. Uh, if I have never tried you know, this brand of uh, pullover, but I see a Nike logo on it, I know it's quality. I know it's something that I, uh, at least, you know, if I'm paying 80 bucks for it, I know why. I know where that's coming from. I know the source of it, um, kind of the, the quality behind it. If it's another brand name that is completely different to me, I might try it. But if I don't have something that I can then uh, refer back to or, or recognize that I'm not helping that brand out because I'm, I can't refer people to it. So um, it, it just gives you kind of some, some behind the scenes help in monitoring your brand, but it also gives you some and about in the marketplace um, marketing that you're not necessarily actively doing. The customers can do it for you. Yeah, that's great. You know, that's, that's a great thing. And again, like we never, none of us really ever know. We think we might just be selling something on Amazon, but we have no idea if we hit a sweet spot in the marketplace and all of a sudden we do really well, it's really hard to scramble after the fact, you know, we, when we have a plan moving forward, even if it takes a year, um, you can start using it now and you can start the process now. And then a year from now, you'll either have a trademark or you won't. And you, you're, you're going to have to go through the process either way. 
but the protections on Amazon and the, the only other thing I can add to that really is the fact that since I've had brand registry on Amazon, I have had zero problems with getting, I, I've, you don't have to get GTIN exemptions. You don't even actually have to have UPC codes for your product anymore because you're, you have reached a level, level with Amazon of legitimacy because they know, they know how long and how legitimate this process is because anything that has to do with the federal government, number one is always going to take lots of time. And number two, it's a legitimate at the federal level. So Amazon's recognizing that this is also, and all some people are like, oh, this brand registry. And why does it have to be all these bells and whistles? It's for us, actually. It's our protection to the fact that we know that if we see somebody that has brand registry on Amazon, we know that they all had to go, no matter how big or small their trademark, no matter how big or small their company, they had to go through the very same uh, process little old me had to go through in order to get this one trademark registered. So we don't have our, you know, for lack of a better example, we don't have a lot of the cheap Chinese manufacturers just jumping in and registering brands with Amazon because they didn't go through that process. So no matter how much money you have, you still can't buy your trademark. You have to go through the same process as everyone else. And so there's this protection there that even if you're not a household name, you also get special privileges on Amazon to be able to beef up your listings. You also get these wonderful branding reports that every single thing you have on there. It even shows you your top competitors and how you can improve your listings to compete against them. So there is so much more to brand registry, but getting that trademark is the number one essential piece to the pie. And of course, our wonderful friends, Ben and his team are able to help you. So Ben, can you tell them what's the best way for them to get a hold of you so they can start their trademark process? I'd be happy to. Um, You can go to to royaltrademarklaw.com. And on there, you'll see uh, contact information, or you can reach out to me at B Becker, that's B as in boy, B-E-C-K-E-R, Becker at royaltrademarklaw.com. I'd be happy to to answer any questions that people have and and kind of work through uh, the registration process with them as well. Awesome. And yeah, you guys, you know, the, the, all the stuff will be in the show notes as well. So if you guys are listening and walking the dog, you're like, wait, I got to write that down. Don't worry. It's on the show notes. Of course, you can always reach out to any of us at mommy income to get more information on how to talk with Ben and his team. Um, I know that they provide like flat rate packages for, for different legal services. They'll help you with the process. They'll even help answer some questions after being through the process twice now, um, and once by myself and, and do it yourself type of thing. And then also with um, the help of wonderful attorneys, I cannot suggest highly enough that you use professional help with this. And the reason I say that is because if you're like me and you start reading legalese and your eyes glaze over like you're reading Greek or Chinese, um, that same exact thing has happened to me. I get this office action response and I'm like, what does this mean? I don't know. That's not my expertise or my wheelhouse. Just like I would look at plumbing and call a plumber, (laughs) you look at legal documents and you hire the appropriate people. Um, the, the, what, what I want to just say last to everyone listening is this is an investment that you're making in your business. And, you know, I know Ben, that you mentioned about it being an asset. I recently had our business um, evaluated by um, a potential investor and a potential purchaser just for fun, just to see what they would evaluate the business as. And that was one of the top things that they asked and, and actually verified, do you have any U S trademarks and are you using them? And we, did and we have and they said that that ups the value of our business by at least 30 percent because it's something that's a process legally that we went through that then no one can take from you and so it's one of those things that regardless if you think you're using xyz imports or some crazy thing that makes no difference to anyone else um if you somehow come up with one of those products that ends up being you know kind of a home run that you never anticipated it's something that you already have in your back pocket. And it's really not like, like Ben said, it's really not that expensive, even for two classes, you know, $500 plus, you know, some helpful attorney fees. You're, you're talking about protecting your business for, I mean, how long does one trademark last before you have to re re up it? Yeah. So your, your first, your first filing is two years and then it's every eight to nine years after that. And as long as you're doing the maintenance, trademarks never expire. They, they never go away and, and um, you can assign them to new people 
new businesses. So they are very much uh, something that is an investment in your company. One question that actually just came to mind that I, that as we were talking is, say you register in one class to start, do you have to start all over to register a second, third, or fifth class? Yes. So it, it depends on where you're at in the process. Uh, for a limited time frame, you can pay additional filing fees to add um, additional classes to your to your application. Uh, but if you've gotten through so there are various stages in the, in the application. The first is the attorney review at the USPTO. The second is what they call a publish for opposition. So they have a, a trademark gazette. They publish all approved marks for, for anybody to go in and look at and say, hey, wait a minute. They look like they're similar to my mark and they're selling the same products. I don't want them to get registered. So after that position, that opposition period ends, you would not be able to add any further classes because uh, the USPTO would consider that it um, kind of cheating the system essentially um, by allowing the opposition to close and, and potential businesses not, not thinking you were competing with them all of a sudden having that additional class added. So kind of you have about three months after your application is submitted to, to do additional classes. After that period, you'd have to do a new application. Okay, sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking even after that, doing an application for however many more that you might have added at that point. Generally speaking, if you're picking, picking up a pretty unique mark, anyhow, you're not going to have any opposition. So it, hopefully it will, you know, kind of transpire that way. So Great. This right. has been such great information. Again, I know all of the Mommy Income listeners, the Amazon Files listeners, we do have a training talking about um, creating your brand, brand packaging, and, and the initial preparations that you need to make in order to get a trademark. So going through that training is helpful, but it is not the be all catch all for all of this. I, again, our recommendations is always to contact a professional like Ben and his team to be able to help you with that because uh, let's be honest, we're good at e-commerce, we're good at entrepreneurship, but we, we're not attorneys. And that's why we have to leave the good stuff to the people who, who deserve to work on it and have earned their right in the space. So thank you, Ben, so much for coming on and sharing your expertise. Again, you guys, you can find him at royaltrademarklaw.com and you can email him them. All the stuff will be in the show notes to be able to um, reach out to him and his team. And even if you just have inquiry questions and you're moving forward with it, their, their team is excellent there and they'll be happy to help you again. Thanks, Ben, so much. Go Chiefs! And um, we'll you. see you at the same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Take care. Thank you.